Chuck, we're back. We got another explainer. All right. It's always good. There's some good stuff happening out there in the solar system. And while I carry some expertise, that that's not good enough for stuff that where we got to go to the source, okay? Wow. <laughs> where NASA's up to stuff, and let's go get some NASA expertise for always some good. of this. Always yeah, good. Yeah, there's always good. And there's, there's a mission called DART. Okay. That's in progress. And we're going to find out about that from Lindley Johnson. Lindley, welcome to Star Talk, dude. Hey, glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. So you're NASA's first planetary defense officer. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, planetary defense officer. That means I have uh, oversight of all the activities that the agency is doing uh, for uh, protecting our planet from a uh, potential asteroid impact. Um, so, so clearly, you guys work with the Justice League. And, <laughs> That's uh, exactly right. <laughs> He's yeah, behind. I have, him on, I, have, I have him on speed dial. Yes. yes. <laughs> wait, wait. So, yeah, Lindley, I, if if we see you on TV. That's a bad day for the world. Is that because you're going to be announcing? Oh, I, 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 I hope not, uh, because uh, I'm here to to, to explain uh, uh, things. And oh, okay, okay. Uh, really like to, still, uh, yeah. really like to but still uh, <laughs> talk talk to folks about uh, what does uh, planetary defense entail and uh, mm. how uh, did we get ourselves prepared for that? I think Neil was talking about that explanation where it ends with, and we're all going to die. <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's what we're here for, is to make sure we never get into that uh, Oh, that there situation. you go. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Hence the yeah. word defense. That's right. right. Not, not, oh, it's too late. Go buy toilet paper and water and run. Right. So, 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 Lindley, tell me yeah, about Yeah, that's called survival. Dark. We're, we're yeah, survival. You're into the defense <laughs> Okay, so a DART, uh, it's, uh, it sounds like just a cool word, but it's actually an acronym. So what's going on with that acronym? That's right. Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Uh, you know, the first part, the double asteroid. Well, we are testing uh, this capability against a double asteroid, a, a binary asteroid. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, impact the moon of this asteroid system. Uh, Asteroid's called uh, Didymos, and its moon is called uh, Dimorphos. Well, so the moon is just the littler one because they're both little, right? I mean, well, that's you, true. The Didymos you have, is the about right a... to call it a moon <laughs> rather than just some extra debris around the debris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think moonlit is maybe the the more appropriate term. Moonlit. Didymos... I'm going with moonlit on this one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Didymos is about a half mile across. Uh, uh, Dimorphos is about 500 feet across, so, you know, kind of the size of a small football stadium, high school, you know, football stadium size. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but uh, oh, we are going to be uh, hitting that 500-foot uh, 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 target uh, at uh, 6.8 million miles from the Earth. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Nice. Okay, so I remember when it launched back in November. So right. all this time it's been... It's making its way towards it, making its way. We've been uh, transferring from uh, uh, Earth orbit from where we launched out to the orbit that uh, uh, Didymos is in. Uh, Didymos uh, spends all of its time outside of Earth's orbit, so we've got to move out just a little bit. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, in the 26th of September, that week, the 26th of September, Didymos is in one of those times when it has a close approach, a relatively close approach to, to the Earth. And that is advantageous to us because uh, we can observe it uh, by ground-based uh, observatories both before and after the impact uh, so that we can see what our effect has been uh, on, the, uh, on the moon's orbit. Mm. Okay, um, so just I want to make this clear to everyone watching or listening. So you launched... A spacecraft intended to collide with an asteroid at a location that is near enough to Earth to have good ground-based ob observations of it. So you, right. this was launched to a place where it will meet up with the asteroid, right? So, so it's launched to, to, to where the asteroid will be on September 26th. 
Yes, that's uh, that's exactly correct. Uh, okay, so Chuck, like, it's ask, called ask, rocket science. Chuck, rocket it's called science. rocket science. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Asteroid skeet shooting. Yeah, it's got, it's it's got ast- astrodynamics is what it's called. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the asteroid skeet shooting better. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, okay, so uh, are these actually headed towards us? Uh, no, no, neither. Uh, well, Didymos, uh, as I said, it's its orbit is entirely outside of Earth's orbit. It poses no hazard uh, to the Earth, although it does come within uh, uh, five, six million miles uh, at its closest approach to, to Earth's orbit. And when it's, uh, when this uh, experiment is over, will it still pose no threat to Earth? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's well, like, you know, that's... Uh, that, that's, that's headline the, is oops. You know, there's the an oops of, headline. Uh, of these kinds of tests is, you know, uh, first, uh, do, no, do no harm. Okay. Now, we're not uh, going to put it into any uh, increased risk uh, to the Earth. Uh, uh, it's another one of the nice things about this test setup is uh, we won't be imparting en- enough force to change uh, the orbit uh, oh. of the system about the moon or about the sun. Uh, we are just changing the orbit of the moonlet uh, about the uh, primary asteroid uh, Didymos, where it's right now it's in a uh, orbit that takes it about 12 hours to go around uh, Didymos. Uh, we will be uh, uh, slightly decreasing its orbital velocity. So therefore the orbit will collapse a little bit and uh, uh, it will uh, only take about 11 hours and 45 minutes uh, to complete its orbit. Uh, no. So this is, this is a, a relative cosmic fender bender. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, no need for ambulance chasers to show up to this one. <laughs> have right. you, been, well, you, know, have you been injured in an asteroid accident? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it's it's a test, uh, you know, and, and uh, so test we want to do it. We, uh, we, we want to do enough uh, to demonstrate that it works, but not uh, enough to completely rearrange the inner solar system. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so uh, do we know enough about the structural integrity of the moonlit oh. to know what will happen? Will it bust it into pieces? Will it just make a puff of dust? What What do you know or think will happen? Yeah, well, uh, there's uh, uh, what we think will happen. Uh, you know, we don't know exactly uh, the moonlet's uh, composition. Uh, we've never observed it uh, directly. Uh, we uh, assume, uh, which is a good assumption, that it's similar composition than the primary is, uh, itself. It's probably made out of material uh, that uh, came off of the primary uh, asteroid, either. Uh, by an impact uh, of it uh, back in the oh, distant mm-hmm. past, or a fragment. So it's, it's a fragment of it. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Right. Or, or material that, because it's a fairly fast rotator, the uh, material from around the equator of it can uh, escape uh, if it gets disturbed too much, and then you know form form the moonlet. Uh, so that's that's a basic assumption. It's a, a common composition of uh, asteroids. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, carbonaceous com- uh, chondrite, uh, uh, but we don't know how uh, its strength, you know, how well it's it's put together. But uh, with this uh, uh, spacecraft, this small uh, DART spacecraft, it's about the size of a of a vending machine, uh, and the force that it in- imparts uh, under uh, a wide range of uh, scenarios, it's it's not going to do anything but but make a nice crater. Uh, create some ejecta, uh, and uh, that's another part of the test is, you know, just how much ejecta uh, uh, material coming out of the crater that it forms uh, will there be? Uh, because okay, so, that... so, so Lindley, you know, you're missing out on some potentially big headlines here. You had to send a nuke into it. You right. See? <laughs> you that gotta... We've been trained. For, this is our training for watching Hollywood movies, you know. You got to drill down because you know you, yeah, you got to well, drill. You can't blow the you can't blow the nuke on the surface. Everybody well, knows. Everybody not, knows that. That's that's not what we want to do. We don't want to <laughs> blow, it, blow it up, uh, you know, because you uh, may not disintegrate all the material, and it all will be in the same orbit, and then you just got a bunch of buckshot coming at you. It's, okay, it's oh, much, much better to ugly. make that subtle. Uh, yeah. change in its orbital velocity, which changes its orbit and its position in space in the future. And so what was going to be a hit will be a complete miss, you know, two, three years from now. 
So, so Lindley, let me ask a, a blunt sort of physics question, because that, that was my college major. If you know the mass of the moonlit and you know the mass of the, of the impactor, uh, of DART, and you know the energy and momentum, then you already know the answer to this. Oh. So where is the uncertainty that you're trying to explore? Well, uh, we certainly have all mod modeled it all up like that and know yes. uh, what to expect. But as I uh, mentioned, that we don't know exactly the composition uh, of the object. So uh, we don't know exactly what its mass is. Uh, that's some oh, of what no. we'll find out. Okay. Okay. Some of what we'll find out as we, as we observe it. And then uh, uh, we have a, a small CubeSat accompanying us, which we dropped off a few days ago. Uh, the Lycia Cube... Uh, uh, provided by the Italian Space Agency, and it's going to uh, follow us in, offset a little bit, so it doesn't follow us completely in, uh, in to take images of the impact of uh, the ejecta and uh, the uh, rest of the asteroid, so we have a better idea of what its exact size is. Like I said, we've never actually observed the moonlit of Didymos uh, directly. So Wait, so that CubeSat uh, was piggybacking until you, quote, dropped it off. Is that correct? Right. That's right. Yeah, interesting. yeah, interesting. So, so the mm -hmm. the bit that that actually collides, does that have any scientific instruments that are going to? It has a it has one. Yeah, it has one. It's uh, called the the great an airbag. Camera. Is it an, an airbag? airbag? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's no, an it's, airbag. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It's the Draco camera. It's both our science instrument and our navigation uh, camera. Uh, it is used to uh, continuously image. Uh, the asteroid uh, pairs it's going in, and then uh, 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 the images are used for the autonomous navigation of the mission uh, to, uh, you know, find uh, find both the asteroids, uh, you know, select and focus on the small one, and then drive the spacecraft autonomously into the uh, small asteroid. As a man formerly of the Air Force, I think I, I can say this with some confidence that this mission is not purely orbital ballistics because once this thing targets the asteroid it's going to hit the asteroid because we know how to target targets <laughs> we, we, we know yeah. how to hit targets <laughs> right. okay no matter well, what is, is that a is that an accurate statement well right but there's a you know still a lot of uh, orbital dynamics involved in that uh, uh what you're doing is you're aiming for the point in space where you're you expect the target to be at the at the time that you reach reach it, and so you've got to take the orbital motion into. But it's not going to miss the target by a yard. It's going to hit the target because you have targeting. You, you have military level targeting mm -hmm. uh, hardware yeah, on this yeah, platform. Yeah, Isn't that if, correct? If, if everything works as designed and uh, we understand everything, we think about it. Yes, we're going to hit it dead center. Dead so, center. And when you, you hit it. it dead center, is it going to be? kind of like a bullseye, like a moving bullseye that you hit, like straight on? Or is this something where you come alongside it and veer it off its course? Or, you know, what? what no, what no, it... we're, we are, uh, our approach speed is like four miles per second. Wow. Uh, and so uh, it uh, kind, of, kind of happens there at the end of the bleak of an eye, which is why the spacecraft has to uh, uh, drive itself autonomously mm. because you can't joystick it. The, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's too much lag time. Yeah, yeah, light light speed time is about thirty eight seconds or so, uh, one way. So, uh, uh, when it actually uh, impacts, it'll be a little over half a minute later before we know. You even that it know impacted. before <laughs> before you even know. Wow. All right. And a little bit about your background. You, uh, I have on my notes here. You twenty three years in the Air Force, active duty. So, dude, uh, yeah, that's, as, as they right. say, thank you for your service. And by the way, you kind of well, sound a little bit like mission control. I just thought I'd say that, you know. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you. It comes from a, comes from a little bit of... It comes from a little bit of experience, and uh, uh, yeah, only yeah, folks from Mission Control would take that as a compliment, right? right. Thank you for the Mission uh, Control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you're, you're the voice I want to hear because it's no matter what's going on, that's the voice, right? If something bad, something good, whatever, it that's the voice. So it's reliably steady right. for no matter what else is oh. happening out there. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So so if if we if it deflects, um, if Dart deflects 
dimorphous in exactly the way we expect. This is confirmation that our methods, tools, tactics, techniques are doing what they should. Okay, so now, uh, the day after that, we discover an asteroid headed straight towards us. So now... Well, at that you know, point, we're out of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You well, got another dart lined yeah, we up. We got here? another dart sitting around because <laughs> well, in fact, I'm thinking key, I need more than a dart. All right. I yeah, need well, the key <laughs> to this whole business is finding them, find them early, and it is absolutely possible uh, within our knowledge and, and technology uh, to find any object that represents a significant impact of the Earth, not only years but decades or even a century uh, uh, in advance. Once we know they're out there, know what their orbits are. Uh, we can predict uh, well into the future uh, as if any represents a hazard to the Earth uh, and uh, have uh, plenty of time to, to do something about it. Uh, but we, we need to be looking for them. And so that is the other part of my office's mission is uh, to improve our capabilities to detect, track, and characterize uh, these objects so that we uh, have a full catalog of uh, what is that out there in Earth's vicinity that could do us harm in the future. And even if there's not one that's going to hit us in the next 10 years, uh, that's a legacy piece of knowledge to hand down to uh, uh, future generations that, uh, you know, all, all these millions of asteroids over here, you don't need to worry about. Here's a subset that you need to keep an eye on, uh, you know, right. that over could time become a to problem. make sure. So, so let me ask you both this. Can I ask both of you guys this? Speaking of what you just said there, Lindley, um, this is a long setup. Just bear me with me because I'll get right to it. There was a, a show that I watched where an interplanetary terrorist dislodged um, asteroids from the, from the asteroid belt or the Kuiper belt, I'm not sure, and uh, actually sent them to Earth as bombs. It was a brilliant like, plan and idea. Is there anything cosmologically that could happen? Now, of course, we're not an interplanetary terrorist, but cosmologically, is there an event that could happen that could cause that, where we have something that was peacefully resting, doing its thing, then all of a sudden it's activated? Okay, well, you know, an impact between two asteroids, say in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, could dislodge some material that over time uh, would come into the inner and into the inner solar system, but it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It, you know, it'll be something that uh, will transpire over not even months, uh, probably years, uh, uh, for it to uh, wind its way into an orbit uh, that would eventually impact the Earth. And so, as long as we're out there looking, we'll see that happen. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would add to that that once we learned that impacts made a difference in the history of Earth's. Uh, life and geology, the we got impact happy and people sus wondered: Is there another star out there far away that we too and dim so we can't see it? But it's a binary star with the sun, and that star maybe has an elongated orbit that takes it through the Kuiper belt, disrupting comets and and periodically causing a rain of comets on the inner solar system, thereby creating periodic waves of extinction on Earth. Whoa. And so you can look at the extinction record, and there are these, you know, they're big extinctions, but they're also these sort of smaller episodes. And there are people suggesting there might have been this twin star, and they even gave it a name. It was called Nemesis, right? And so, but the, the numbers really didn't work out because the, the orbit would be pretty stable and the extinction periods were not. But this would be an example of dislodging otherwise um, harmless uh, comets. Um, who are minding their own business and making them killer, uh, killer objects. But uh, Lindley, we only had a couple more minutes here. Um, I just want to emphasize that if you discover something early, it's not that's not only good so that we can plan and fund and design missions, but also if you deflect it early, isn't it true you don't have to deflect it by very much? Oh, that's exactly right. Uh, I mean, just a very small change in the orbital velocity, you know, changes where it's going to be in the future. And so uh, just uh, uh, changing the uh, orbital velocity of an asteroid by a, a centimeter per second, if it's done four or five years uh, uh, before the possible impact will be more than enough uh, to uh, make it a miss instead of a hit. You know, so things that are going at 14,000 miles an hour 
uh, in orbit, we just need to take a couple of inches per second off of that speed. Mm -hmm. right, do do right. you take into consideration the other planets that we have? Um, is it like, we don't want to send something off, uh, you know, where Jupiter is like, thanks, Earth. You know, <laughs> nice, yeah, well, nice gut punch. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miss well, Earth when it hit Venus, right? <laughs> right, right, right. In our in our orbital modeling, we take into account the gravitational fields of, uh, of all the planets. Uh, you know, to be able to predict where things are going to be in the future, and of uh, a good uh, number of the asteroids, uh, over a hundred of the largest asteroids. Uh, uh, are in our in our orbital modeling. So uh, we, uh, although we're uh, wait wait Chuck, you hear how you said that they're in our orbital, orbital model, model, which means they're headed. They they could hit us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no no. Uh, uh, so uh, although we're here to protect the Earth, uh, we are also looking for possible impacts to any other planet uh, in the solar system or or, or the moons. Because uh, that's, you know, another interesting science experiment. If uh, something, say, uh, significant were to impact Mars, uh, we'd like to see that see and that. see what the effect are be because, uh, uh, well, that's how that's how the solar system came to be the way it is, is the right. impacts over the... And, and, we made, and we witnessed just such a thing back in the 90s with the impact on Jupiter with the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet. That was spectacular. Hubble was up and running just in time for that. Right. So we, we, right. We, well, that's we, how, you know, the, this planetary defense uh, business really got started. Prior to that, you know, it was kind of in the realm of science fiction and a, a few astronomers were worried about it, but, but, uh, not a, lo a little large... shoemaker wake up call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what that was and, shot across uh, our bow. Yeah. 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 So that, uh, really got things going. That's, uh, I got into this business, uh, uh, Shortly before that, in that uh, I was working with some of the astronomers that uh, wanted to use uh, the CCD technology that uh, we were developing in the Air Force for wow. space surveillance purposes, and uh, I got to you know working with them as though. Well, just you know, to be clear, a CCD is in every single digital camera cam in the world today. So <laughs> charge, right, he's not charge coupling he's, device. Uh, correct, <laughs> and uh, my man here, Lindley, is not totally singing the praises that he should be. Yeah. Oh, we just about the CCD. But yeah. It's with, like the whole without, world. Without it, there would be no Instagram kids. Okay? <laughs> correct, correct. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, remember the, I remember the years uh, we, we not only didn't have CCD uh, cameras on our phones, we didn't have phones. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Grandpa. How old are you? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so they wouldn't uh, be Instagram. So they, they, were, they were... They were later. They were looking for the with, with asteroids, <laughs> and uh, so that got me <laughs> got me interested, uh, you know, in this so problem. We didn't, we didn't have Instagram; we had telegrams. <laughs> <laughs> telegrams, yeah, latergrams, whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's and great. one other important yeah. point, Chuck. You said this evil person was moving uh, asteroids out of their orbits into hit Earth. Um, uh, Carl Sagan was worried about that, saying that if we have the power to deflect an asteroid, then an evil opponent. Uh, enemy would have the power to d to save us, to deflect away from Earth, and they would have the power to deflect something towards Earth oh. and possibly take out an entire country. Oh right? wow! And and my rebuttal to that, you know, that would make you know interesting movie. My rebuttal to that is. We already have the power to take out cities and countries, and you can do that within 45 minutes. That's what yeah. ballistic missiles are, right? right? Yeah. Nuclear ballistic missiles can Latina. already do that with Latina. high precision at any time. Whereas moving an asteroid, then you have to, and then you have to like, it, how's Earth rotating? Is it going to hit in the right spot? And it's going to happen years from now? So it's, it's too, too much histrionics for that. Right, a lot more complicated. And uh, I'd also say that uh, uh, it, it you don't have to be quite as precise in moving the asteroid away from the Earth as you would be to be able to target it, you know, precisely on some uh, excellent uh, point the there. Earth. Because <laughs> there are many more places the asteroid can go that does yeah. not hit the Earth than to would to hit the Earth, especially a target on the Earth. Earth is pretty small when you get out there in space. Right. Just thought I'd add yeah, that exactly. point. Yeah. Lindley, we got to call it quits there, but thank you for this update. Oh my gosh. So and, cool. Yeah. Such cool stuff. Uh, 26th and, of September, 714 Eastern time, uh, where we the uh, impact, 714 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, Lindley, what, what is the website we can go to to follow the progress of DART? 
Well, uh, the NASA uh, website, uh, we'll uh, have it up and up and center. Uh, uh, NASA.gov. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. The impact, NASA. Not NASA. Not NASA.gov. <laughs> And mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, you can just Google Dart uh, uh, on uh, on the internet, uh, Dart uh, APL uh, Applied Physics Lab, or uh, Google uh, Planetary Defense at NASA, and that will uh, lead you to all of our uh, website and all the information on uh, near -earth asteroids uh, that we are are collecting. Nice. Very cool. Well, I think the real takeaway here, people is uh, we should love each other because the solar system is trying to kill us. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck, for that happy concluding <laughs> thought. Yes. Okay. That pretty much wraps it up. <laughs> We're still in a shooting gallery, yeah. people. Uh, Chuck, I'm pretty sure that the next time they do this, if, they, if the asteroid is bigger, they're going to call it Longbow Mission, not the Dart Mission. <laughs> We're not playing darts anymore. <laughs> and then, then Howitzer Cannon Mission. And then, all right, we're going to climb the ladder there, I'm sure. All right, you've been uh, watching, possibly listening to another installment of Star Talk Explainers. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host, always bidding you to keep looking up.